What's going on guys? My name is Cody and welcome back to another video where today we are going to be doing a reaction video on Game Theory, the Mystery of Minecraft Haunted Disc Minecraft Reaction by Charmix and the Game Theorists. Now, I really do like Charmix. I've done a couple of videos on his channel I uh, and the Game Theorist as well. And this is actually a continuation off of the Game Theory's other Minecraft theory video where he started a uh, a path to figuring out the lore behind Minecraft. So yeah, let's just get into this. What is up, you guys? I'm Charming. So today, I'm going to be reacting to Game Theory, The Mystery of Minecraft's Haunted Discs uh, by The Game Theorist. I haven't reacted to a Game Theorist video in a little while now, but this t title really caught me off guard. I didn't know that the discs in Minecraft were haunted to begin with, so I'm actually really intrigued here. But uh, yeah, with that being said, the original link's in the description. Make sure you guys go subscribe to The Game Theorist if you haven't already. Without any further ado, let's begin. Yeah, I didn't know they were haunted. I always thought they were just, like, discs. I don't know. I guess I'm not that deep into the Minecraft lore, I guess. I don't know. Since the beginning, there's been... One mystery long unanswered in the world of Minecraft. Is Herobrine even real? Like, I obviously, Herobrine, that's been around for a long time. But I never knew if it was real or, or just made up. No, Herobrine's not real. It's just an fictitious internet ghost story revolving around Minecraft, but in my brain, he's real. I, I like to think he's canon, even if he's not. One set of game design decisions so creepy, so d disturbing, that they feel like they come from a completely different game. It's a riddle that, once solved, exposes more of the hidden- The creepy editing here, man. Deep inside this world. Today, we're covering the mystery of the broken discs 11 and 13. <laughs> Hello and that was uh, pretty cool editing and creepy. Turn it. Welcome to game theory. Can you dig it? So last Minecraft episode, we started an epic quest. Well, everyone else gets to play around with their giant meatballs and deadly skyboxes. Here <laughs> we are doing the important work, solving the hidden lore that's buried inside this game. Because it is there. I started to prove that last time, and it is just waiting to be unlocked by us. I asked all of you to send me your theories, and you did. The response was overwhelming, with hundreds of new theories posted in the comments, as well as over on the Game Theorist subreddit. Everything from the origins of the pigmen to the literally burning questions of the nether. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Someone actually figured out the origins of the pigmen? Dude, that's insane. I want to go look that up later because the pigmen are my favorite mob in Minecraft. Don't ask why, I just love them. Um, and also, my, the my theory of the nether is the fact that it's, excuse me, it's the, uh, it's pretty much the core of the overworld. So, you know how, like, we're on Earth, and Earth has, like, different levels, like, uh, you know, the inner core, outer core, all the way up to the crust. Well, uh, the Minecraft overworld, it goes overworld to bedrock... And then, you know, you have the void, but ultimately the nether is right underneath either the void or, you know, bedrock. Um, but uh, uh, either way, and that's and that's due to the uh, achievement digging deeper because, you know, I mean, literally in the title, it says digging deeper. You're digging down deeper to go to the nether. So literally, you know, it's got to be right under bedrock somewhere. Keep them coming, guys. In full transparency, I'm still reading through them. and I Yeah, like, it looks like there's so many there. I don't see how you could get through all of them so fast. I'm working on compiling all the information to see where we... That's gonna give Matt enough, um, 
there's topics to talk about for the next year go to next but today i actually wanted to tackle a minecraft mystery that always bugged me personally and one that i didn't see many theorists actually talking about when i made the call for theories today i want to talk about the music discs for those of you who don't know music discs are unique items found randomly in chests that can be played in jute boxes to oh is that where they're found because i like i don't think i've ever found one before i know what they are i know what they do but i i didn't know where you could find them you know liven up what's otherwise is a very quiet, serene game. No, not that. The music <laughs> discs are something to really set the mood. Uh, wrong move, guys. Perfect. These discs can also be dropped by creepers when they're killed by arrows shot from either a skeleton or a stray. It's an oh. odd mechanic, but all right, we'll just go with it. Let that beat drop, creeper. Literally, creeper, let it drop. You don't even have hands. How can you be holding this thing in the first place? Other than that, though, there's really no other way to obtain them. They can't be crafted, after all. Now, all of that... Total side note, just here's a little rant I have. Do you know how stupid it is in Minecraft that you can't... I've been... For those of you who don't know, I've been doing like a Minecraft Let's Play series on my channel over the last few weeks. You can't build a saddle for your horse in Minecraft. How can you build all these complex, crazy redstone things and pistons and whatnot, but you can't build a bloody saddle for your for a horse? When all it really should take is some leather. It should take some leather and just put it in a little pattern, and that should build a saddle. How is that not a thing? I've been trying to get a saddle for so long. I'm riled up just thinking of it. I'm riled up just thinking of it. It's so stupid. Like, the only way you can get it is either looking through random chests or fishing apparently. That's the only way you can get a saddle, which is the dumbest thing in Minecraft, I think. It, it, it makes me so mad. Alright, anyway, side note over, I'm angry now. Oof, I don't think about it too much. I just go look for a saddle. Jeez. Yeah, but it kind of does annoy me that are, there are some items in which you cannot craft in Minecraft. I like the music is. They should be craftable, but yeah, whatever isn't particularly interesting, right? But where this goes from just being another item to a full-on gaming creepypasta is right here. Discs 11 and 13. You see, most music discs in the game have fairly innocuous names and music, like blocks, mall, and cat. One of the first two music discs ever added into the game. But along with Cat, there was one other, simply titled 13. And unlike all the other ambient chill-out music, this one was, well, unsettling. Outside of it not having a name and- Are you gonna play it? I've never heard it. You gonna play it? I wanna hear it. Also being numbered after what many consider to be an unlucky or evil- Oh, that's true. But so that airplanes and hotels don't even have 13th rows and floors. Fun fact, check it out next time you're in a hotel. Yeah. Well, why don't they? I mean, 13 is considered an unlucky number, but it's just a number. There's nothing inherently evil about it. Like, literally, I could just put a, a 13 on screen. I'm not sure if it, I'm going to put it on screen, but literally, if I did, then it's, it's, just an, it's just another number. Nothing about it is inherently evil, but whatever. Yeah, I know that's true. Oh, I didn't know about the airplane, but I know the hotel not having the 13th floor. Color an airplane. 13 also cuts off abruptly right in the middle of the track. And when it comes back, we're suddenly hit with echoey otherworldly noises, leading many people to assume that this was a record left by the alien-like Enderman. But then the mystery got even deeper. When version 1.0.0 came out, nine more music tracks were added to the game with yet was this when Notch was in control, or is this after he sold the company? And another disc going... 1.0.0, that's... that's... Yeah, excuse me, that's Minecraft release, that's after Notch sold the company. I'm pretty sure. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong, but I'm pretty darn sure 1.0.0 was after Microsoft. A name. This time, it was disc 11. Like, did Notch build all this lore or whatever? And then when Minecraft got a hold of it, they didn't really build onto the lore as they didn't know it? As much as Notch didn't really tell them, what, like, you know, the lore, the background? Or did Notch sell it and then Microsoft 
you know, after Microsoft got a hold of it, did they continue on with the lore? Or, like, did you take that into consideration? And we're number 13. It seems like they're continuing on with the lore. Just not as much. To us that we're not in the overworld anymore, friends. Starting right off the bat with desperate running, heavy breathing, and coughing. <laughs> That's weird. And here all along, I thought that Minecraft was for kids. Can you imagine finding this as a child playing this game, putting it on? Yeah, that'd be terrifying. The jukebox, being excited to hear what you just found. And then what? You suffer from PTSD because of what you hear. Actually, I probably don't even have to ask you to imagine this sort of thing. I'm sure many of you watching probably had that exact same experience when you were playing the game as a kid. Bring in the cuboidal nightmares. I hear no man, but that thing. Adding to the history, <laughs> 11 is broken, shattered to pieces. That sounds like my heart after my wife left me. These two discs led many people to conclude one of two things. Either they were documenting someone who was attacked by Enderman, or they were of someone being chased around by Herobrine, the ghostly glitch that many say haunted the game's code in the early days of mining and crafting. But that's largely where the discussion of these things stopped. Guesses. To my knowledge, no one has truly taken a scientific look at analyzing these two discs to try and uncover the mysteries that they contain. So today, I am doing exactly that. You oh, this is gonna be interesting. Like, I never knew those freaking discs existed to begin with. Obviously, I knew the music disc exists, but I didn't know they were, you know, like, creepy or whatever. I guess it does make sense why the video is titled, you know, Haunted Discs, as it does seem kind of haunted or definitely bizarre. Using a combination of audio analysis, visualization tools, metagame analysis, and just good old logic to try and end the childhood nightmare that was these two discs. And in the process, I'm hoping that what we find continues to unravel the mysteries of the deeper lore hidden within this game's files. Now, before we get into any deep analysis of the audio itself, I want to start by actually analyzing these soundtracks visually. As many of you may remember from my video on the Fortnite Season 5 ARG, it's relatively easy to hide clues within audio files, but sometimes those clues aren't necessarily ones you're gonna hear. Oftentimes, they're ones that you're gonna see. They're called spectrograms, visual representations of the frequencies that you're hearing in a sound file. It's a- What? Visual representations in a sound file? I don't know what the frick that means. A technique that we've actually used a lot when creating clues for our Game Theorist ARG. Weird sounding audio files like this. That when changed into a visual format. It's a fire beat. Give you everything from web addresses to secret passwords like this. Oh. Really? That's cool. Wait, what, what is this? What's this code? I wonder where that could lead. Advertisement? Plug? Into. Yeah, yeah, that's it. 7v7. No way. No way! I can't believe it! <laughs> New back to school game th All right, well done. Well done there, Matt. I'll give you- I'll give, I'll give you- I'll give you that as well done. Theory merch? <laughs> wow! <laughs> this stuff looks perfect for any mining or crafting adventure. Now, where was I? Oh yeah, discs 11 and 13. Oh, discs 11 and 13. Well, they are certainly <laughs> creepy sound files. They're not filled with the types of sounds that would make me immediately think to put them through a spectrogram. However, there was one finding that I wanted to put to the test for today's theory because I was kind of skeptical about the results that they had. A French Minecrafter named B. Sidro supposedly made a spectrogram of the sound files and said that he found both a creeper face and the numbers 12418 hidden inside. It sounded like a lot of fake news to me and the screenshots that were circulating the internet just felt a bit too perfect, a bit too photoshoppy feeling for me, so I redid the whole- Wait, well, was he right the whole time? That'd be a plot twist. Also, I, I can't believe Notch would go through the, the, um, the bother to implement that in the game. So was it Notch, the one doing this stuff, or was it actually, like, Microsoft once they bought it from him? Because they've I owned it, it for, just, uh, I don't know, I want to say a good, music. like, almost five years now or something. Full spectrograph test using my own tools, and this is what I found. It was 100% true. This wasn't just a bunch of karma fodder, something cool that someone made up to try and get people's upvotes. The images are actually there. That's weird. In the sound file. But then what That's pretty does cool. it mean? Well, interestingly enough, the numbers appear to be a secret signature inserted in there by the music's producer. Minecraft's music oh. was produced by a man named Daniel Rosenfeld. Wait, so that wasn't from Notch doing it? I guess the guy that Notch hired or Microsoft hired 
He was that person was the one who did it? I don't know. Better known online as C418. And wouldn't you know it, but the numbers 1, 2, 12 in hexadecimal code or hex code translates to the letter C. Thus, we have 12418 actually being a code for C418, his online name. The creeper face, oh. meanwhile, well, it's a creeper face. Maybe these tracks are less made by the Enderman and more a product of our little moss bombs. To know for sure, though, we have to keep digging. To continue being good little AV club members here, we're going to need the A to go along with the V that we just analyzed. Analyze, hopefully giving us a clear picture of what exactly is going on. So let's play this thing, starting where it all began, disc 13. Here's a copyright neutral clip. Is that what it sounds like? This takes place in a cave. We have sounds that are echoing, reverberating with wet dripping sounds and chimes. But we don't just have to speculate about this. What we're hearing in disc 13 are very clearly cave ambient sounds. The one specifically programmed into the game to play when you're in a dark, eerie, underground place. I don't like those sounds. Why do they play when you're above ground? Like, when I'm just walking above ground in Minecraft, all of a sudden I start hearing these weird, creepy cave sounds. Like, why? That's so unnecessary. I guess it it's freaks because me you're out. above a cave. Here's a moment from disc 13. And here's one of the matching cave ambience tracks. But it goes even further. Nowadays in Minecraft, there are 19 different cave ambience tracks. But back when disc 13 was first introduced, guess how many there were? 13. 13 isn't uh -oh. just- 13, bum bum bum, bum bum bum. It's a spooky number here. It's spooky. a reference to the number of cave ambient sounds that existed in the game. But what else are we hearing here? Well, at 143, there's the faint sound of a creeper hiss and explosion echoing through the cave. Here's the clip. And here's that iconic sound. Yeah, it sounds like it. That sounds like it. It's immediately followed by the sound of someone falling into water and then staggering out. You can almost hear their footsteps. What it seems to suggest. Yeah, I think that's correct there. But what is this all leading to? Like, so far, it, it doesn't really lead up to anything other than that the creator of the music has just implemented their um, their online name into it, which, uh, whatever, I guess. I don't know how you'd do that, but that's what they, the creator did. Is a caver exploring a cave, running into a creeper, and then having to jump into a pool of water to avoid the ensuing explosion. He gets out, slightly injured, and then tries to find a place to hide. But there are two other audio clues here that are worth mentioning. The first happens at the one minute mark. You can actually hear faint sounds of arrows being shot. Here's the audio. And here's the sound effect in game. But while we hear two arrows being shot, we actually only hear one of them land in the ground. The other one remains silent, which suggests that it hit its target. Nice shot! Now, what mob is found in caves and also happens to fire arrows? Skeletons. Skeletons. Now, remember something that I mentioned before. The music discs are found either in chests or via a very random mechanic of a skeleton stray arrow going on and killing a creeper. And what do we have? So you think someone recorded this and then put it into chests before they got... Bleh. Is that what you're getting to? Uh, I don't know. Disc 13. In this one audio disc, we have a creeper exploding and a mob firing arrows at us. The reason creepers drop music discs when hit by skeletons or stray arrows, it's a reference to disc 13. The last thing worth noting here is the cutoff that I mentioned earlier. The disc stops abruptly after the arrows fire and picks up as the creeper starts hissing. It's a cutoff that's not only unsettling, but one that, wouldn't you know it, also happens at exactly 1 minute and 30 seconds into the track. One, three, 13! Yes, ah! 13. <laughs> oh, yeah. And wouldn't you know it, but the creeper starts to hiss exactly 13. The cutoff is called a bass drop, Matt. Or a build-up to a bass drop, and the creeper explosion is a bass drop. 13 Oof. seconds after that cutoff. Slow clap, Daniel. Slow clap. You use that number 13 to its fullest here. So those are all fun little Easter eggs, but why is it cut off? What are we missing? Well, for that, let's turn to disc 11, which is, quite honestly, a bit more straightforward. Somebody is running on stone, uses some metallic object that clicks, then uses a paper object based on the rustling we hear, before finally running away, first on stone, and then either on dirt or- I wish I knew about this stuff sooner. Cause I mean, that's very interesting. I was not aware Minecraft had lore going that deep or whatever, you know? I never knew about this until today. 
rap. It's freaking weird. Throughout the audio, though, we have a disturbing addition. Coughing and heavy breathing. Human coughing. Sounds that feel very out of place in our perfect little block world. And then it just cuts off. No words, no music, no explanation. Just cuts off at the 1 minute and 11 mark. Um, 1 minute and 11 seconds. You don't get a second slow clap. But seriously, it's no... Yeah, you you you, had, you you messed up. You just could have you just couldn't have pushed it by two more seconds. You just could have pushed it by two more seconds. Wonder these things became a creepy pasta in their own right. To throw something like this into a game that has a massive audience of nine year olds, and suddenly this becomes a complete horror show. Why do you gotta give them no eyes? Like what the frig, man? Come on now. Even as an adult, this feels like it belongs more in my creepy film theory episodes than in the realm of Diamond Minecart and Captain Sparkles. But okay, let's start working on identifying some of those mysterious sounds. It turns out that the easiest way to narrow down what we're actually hearing isn't audio analysis, it's game analysis. We know the metallic clicking has to be flint and steel by process of elimination. Disc 11 was officially added as a music disc on July 30th, 2010. Oh, oh that's definitely Notch era. Minecraft didn't buy it, I want to say until like 2014, I think. Mi not Minecraft, Microsoft. Man, I can't speak. I'm pretty sure Microsoft didn't buy it until like 2014, 2015, around there. So this is definitely Notch era. Other metallic objects were actually added later, like the compass, which was introduced later that year in September, whereas flint and steel has been present in the game before it even had a numbering system. The same is true for the paper object. It can't be a map since maps didn't appear in the game until much later, April 27th, 2011, a full year after the disc was introduced, meaning that our caver would have to be using either paper. That's actually very smart. Well done there. You know, it's how you narrow it down by comparing when things were implemented into the game compared to when the actual sound was made. That's really smart. I would not have thought to do that. Or a book of some form. So he lights himself a fire and presumably starts writing on the paper or book, almost as if he's keeping a journal. And wouldn't you know it, but throughout Minecraft's extended lore, we have ourselves multiple instances of historians who document their findings in this world via journal of some sort. My last episode on Enderman, for instance, talked a lot about the Mob Bestiary, which was one such book written from the perspective of an explorer in this world. And more recently, Recently, in July of 2019, we got ourselves Minecraft The Lost Journals, a no Is an actual book, by the novel, which literally has ripped torn pages from- Oh, so does the, the book actually add to the lore of the game? It's actually really smart that they would do that. An explorer named Nicholas who finds and gets trapped in locations like the Nether. Perhaps this person that we're hearing in the audio files is Nicholas. There's no really solid evidence to that, but it could very well be. Or perhaps any of the authors of any of the journals journals that exist in the Minecraft extended universe. We can't quite be sure who it is, but we can be sure that these two discs connect with each other. They're telling the same story. Despite there being less reverb in disc 11, we know that it's also taking place in a cave based on the types of blocks our adventurer is running on. Done. What is all this leading up to? In like almost every single game theorist, you know, type video, I can tell where things are going and I can kind of put together what the theory is and whatnot, but so far, it hasn't really led to anything. So far, all I've really gotten is that some someone is recording themselves while they're being attacked or whatever. That's it. Sure, it's interesting and it's weird, and I never knew about that until today, but at the same time, now that I know, it's like, yeah, so what? It's like, yes, okay, now we know what the sound is. It's a person escaping danger or whatnot. That's what it sounds like. But other than that, I mean, I mean, that's uh, does that make sense? I don't think theory. I can get across what I'm trying to think. Dungeons contain cobble and mossy cobble. Strongholds didn't exist back then, and we're not hearing ourselves any grass, only stone and dirt. Meaning that probability says it's most likely a cave. Could it be the same cave that we heard back in disc 13? Well, when you look at the events, it seems to continue the story that was set up in disc 13. Disc 11 slots in perfectly at the break point that we hear in disc 13. Our cave explorer gets attacked by arrows from a skeleton at the beginning of 13. The audio breaks, but when when we pick up back in disc 11, we hear him running away, presumably escaping the arrows to a safe area. Oh, so like when it cuts off, that's when the other disc comes in and then where it cut off, that would be put on the end of the second 
disc or the whatever where he can light a fire and record totally the possible. findings people do journal. messages like Clever, that all the time off guard by a creeper a creeper that causes him to get up and run away and as we hear back when disc 13 picks back up again explodes resulting in him jumping into water at the last minute to avoid the explosion we I like the visual representation you did rebuilding that. That was cool. And our little vignette here with him trying to find some place to hide and dry off. Heck, perhaps that's even why disc 11 is shattered in the first place. It broke during the explosion. Oh, that's, I like that. During our... That makes sense, too. Cavers fall. And that, my fellow miners and crafters, seems to be the story of disc 11 and 13. My question is, how can you even listen to the disc if it's broken, I don't think record players would play a broken disc. I don't think. Story of creepers and skeletons and why music discs spawn that way. A story of journalists who are lost underground in caves. A story of broken records and hidden visual Easter eggs. But what's most interesting of it all is that it confirms a part of my last theory. The belief that there was an ancient civilization of builders present here in these games before we arrived. People yeah, that makes came sense. before us. No, these discs weren't created by Endermen, but perhaps more unsettling, they were made by men men, humans, who are- Before they got turned into Endermen? Or before they, you know, bleh? aren't here any longer. A race of people who tried to explore, document, and understand the mysteries of this world, but didn't survive long enough to pass their knowledge on to us. Their journals are lost. Their records are broken. Their structures are left empty. Sure, discs 11 and 13 might not be as creepy as we once believed them to be when we- Yeah, that's what it, that's what it makes it seem like to me, is that they aren't really, it's not really that creepy after all. But it, I guess then again, it's Minecraft, it's not supposed to be that creepy. But the theory itself really does make sense. And it does go along with Matt. You know, it does go along with his prior theory of people being there before. We were younger playing this game, but they allude to something much more dire, an existential dread. This cave explorer is gone without a trace. His people are gone, vanished into thin air. And now we're here alone and putting together the lost pieces of this civilization. Could the same thing that happened to them happen to us? But hey. Probably. I mean, do you know how many times I've died in Minecraft? Hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Ruining your childhood since 2011? I love Thanks that. for watching. What a way to brand yourself. Anyway, uh, I like this theory. Well, that's the end of this video. If you did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And school just started, so uh, expect less videos. And sorry I didn't give you all a video for the past, like, two five weeks or whatever just been yeah stuff about school but anyway thank you all for watching and i'll see you guys next time